Typically, this type of floor has traditional wooden floorboards and earth underneath. Ground floors like this are very draughty and cold. Because of the cold, uninsulated space underneath and the drafts from outside that come up through the floorboards and skirting boards. In this example, we are dealing with a suspended ground floor to which you cannot gain access from underneath. When installing windows and insulating internal walls, it is vital to ensure that insulation is wrapped up to the edge of the window to ensure continuity of insulation. Air tightness tapes are also used to form an effective airtight seal. Even if you are not replacing the window, wrapping insulation into the window reveal is valuable as it will reduce the thermal bridge round the window. Unplastered brick between floors can be a source of drafts and cold. It is important when insulating walls internally that the walls between the floor joists are insulated and draft proofed as far as possible in the same way as the rest of the wall. This will minimise drafts and thermal bridges, avoiding condensation and knock on problems.
When you increase the insulation in a roof like this, you normally end up with a significant thermal bridge in the top corner of rooms with external walls, where the wall insulation and roof insulation do not overlap. Putting a triangle of insulation in the ceiling corner enables the insulation to wrap around the ceiling wall junction. In this example, an unheated loft with ordinary roofing felt, it is vital to keep a ventilation gap under the eaves to prevent condensation building up in the loft space, so you can't pack the insulation into the corners.